Good morning, Jana. How are you? Good morning, Rita. <clears throat> Well, good morning, everyone. Today is, is today is July. I almost said it was June 10th. It is July 10th. Good morning, Sherry. Um, and this is Elizabeth Sharon Ann's Daily Bible Study. Good morning, Heather. Um, and I am Lori. And today we are in Chronicles. Oh, before I forget. Um, if anybody has any prayer request, oh, good morning, Sue. I love you. Just makes me, every time you say good morning, Sue, I feel a hug from you. Uh, good morning, Tony. I was just reading one of your uh, daily prayers on the um, Facebook page. You, you are so good at those. Um, so. Anyway, I'm sorry. I was looking at everybody's names coming up and I lost track of my, uh, lost track of what I was doing. Um, please put your prayer requests and your praise reports in the comments so that we can pray with you and uh, rejoice with you. And um, life is always better together. Um, and when we have wonderful people who encourage and support us, um, life is easier. So <clears throat> today we are in uh, Chron Chronicles, First Chronicles, chapter nine, and um, I don't have much underlined in first chronicles did i say good morning to you lynn i can't remember um except that you know the israelites are coming back um they were exiled um because they were unfaithful to the lord um what the thing that jumped out to me, you know, Saul is going to die today in this chapter. Um, oh, Jan, have a wonderful day at church. Um, and the thing that uh, jumped out at me when I was studying for this, um, and I'm over in, um, let's see, what chapter is it? So it'll be First Chronicles chapter 10, 14. And I'm over starting at uh, verse number four is where I'm going to start talking about. Um, <clears throat> because Saul and um, Oh, that is so sweet, Heather. Um, Saul is in battle. The, the Philistines have attacked and um, Saul's in battle and the Israelites are getting beat. And um, oh, thank you, Lynn. Um, they're getting beat and they start fleeing. And Saul has died. He's on the battlefield. He's asked his armor bearer to um, kill him so that the uh, Philistines don't come and torture him. And his armor bearer is too scared to do it. So Saul falls on his sword himself and he dies. And so all of the other Ili Israelites see this, you know, looking down. Um, and so they flee their towns. They just, they're just like, oh. I'm going to give up. Good morning, Cassie. Um, so they flee their towns and then um, the Philistines take over and they move in and they occupy their towns. And the thing that jumped out at me when I was reading this was that um, the Israelites were in the land, the promised land that God had given them, the promised land that they all fought so hard for. 
um, Joshua had gone through and they'd done all this and fought. They'd been brought out of Egypt in the desert. Now they're in the promised land that God has given them. And um, the ones that were not fighting, the ones that were not fighting were the ones who saw the um, saw um, defeat and rather than stay what was stay in what God had promised and given them ordained for them they ran away and they just gave it up to the enemy um, so what it spoke to me was what is in my life what is in in your life that um you know that God has given you, um, God has promised you, God ordained you to be somewhere and the physical surroundings and things that are going on um, have caused you to give up that land to the enemy. I mean, what areas in your life have, you, have we given up just because it looks hard, just because it looks like um, true, Tony, very true. Um, just because it looks like it's going to be a battle, do we just relinquish the promise that God has given us? I mean, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think we should, but I think I do. Um, so there's, there's that, um, I mean, and they were so disrespectful to Saul um the Philistines they were so disrespectful um when they went out and stripped the dead they took all this plunder they found the bodies of Saul and his sons in Mount Gilboa and so they stripped Saul's armor and cut off his head then they proclaimed the good news of Saul's death before their idols and to the people throughout the land of Phil Philistia they placed the armor in the temple of their God and they fastened his head to the temple of Dagon. I mean, how far Saul fell because he had pride. How far Saul fell because he had pride and decided he was going to seek soothsayers and um mediums instead of asking god for guidance he was gonna seek because god wasn't moving he wasn't speaking to saul as fast as god as saul thought god should and so he moved on to mediums and uh soothsayers and other things to find guidance because he wanted to do what he wanted to do um how far saul has felt that now his head is being fastened to a temple of Dagon. How sad of a story is that? That um, that that's where he ended up. I mean, he was a chosen, chosen man of God to to rule the Israelites, to be king of the Israelites. He was chosen to do that. Um, <clears throat> And because of his pride, he felt very hard, um, you know, and I think it was just a few days ago um, that the Proverbs, it could be, um, it could have been a few days ago, or I could be mixing it up with something uh, that I was listening to um, about pride. Be, I mean, but the word says that pride comes before a fall. I mean, and the thing is, is that Saul's um, descent into his fall was not instant. It was, it was very slow and it was very subtle. First, it came um, when David uh, defeated the giant. And then Paul, Saul got jealous and um it just kind of moved on from there you know he instead of focusing on the task that god had put before him 
to do what he was supposed to do. He focused on other people and what he didn't have, but they did. And so he just slowly descended down to his death where he is, his head is fastened to the temple of an idol. Um, so sad. So sad, but the people were still respectful and they went and got the bones and the bodies and they buried them in their, uh, in, in their rightful place. But um, it says Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He failed to obey the Lord's commands and he even consulted a medium instead of asking the Lord for guidance. So the Lord killed him and turned the kingdom over to David's, to this, to David, son of Jesse. Now that's the other thing. Um, the people knew that David was going to be king. I mean, because there was all this stirring in the land about David. Um, and, you know, he was running from Saul because Saul wanted to kill him because he was so jealous. And the people loved David. So why, when they see this battle going on, do they decide to flee and give up the promises of God? I don't know the answer. That's just my assessment today. Um, it's just my assessment. You know, when it's hard, it's uh, when the when the battle gets hard, that's what we tend to do. We tend to run sometimes um, or we lay down and forfeit the promise that God has given us because it's hard. Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, you guys, you guys have been such a big part of this little journey that I was on to do that run. And I will tell you um, that doing the run um, was probably, if I, I'm almost positive that it was the first time that I actually set a goal for myself um, and actually went through and met the goal now um, and completed it, which has led to a whole nother uh, bunch of stuff that God's bringing up and cleaning up. But in doing that, um, I didn't do it in the mind. I didn't do it the way that I pictured. And even, you know, God told me it was gonna be not perfect. It was, it was gonna be messy. Um, but, you know, when we're on our journey with God, the mindsets that we have, that we have inherited from circumstances and life in general, um, because we have um, unknowingly, I'm sure, chosen to believe what the world tells us or what some kind of circumstance has told us, um, we don't believe what we, we can do or what God says we can do. And um, that mindset makes it difficult for us to do anything. Um, it was very hard. It was very hard. And it was, a, it, was a, it was a battle of the mind while I was doing it. And it is, continues to be a battle in the mind um, as I continue. Um, I am running another race in September, I believe. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But let's move on to Acts. Um, when I was reading this and studying this, I thought, you know, I don't recall in the previous years reading about how this um, I don't know, lately the last few days with Paul going to Rome and being in Greece and going before Caesar. I mean, that's where he's headed to is to go before Caesar, but being in jail, I don't remember reading it. <clears throat> um, and it sounding like um, a book. I mean, I know it's a book, but not sounding like uh, I don't know if that makes any sense. Reading like I'm reading um, a biography, even though I am, 
because it's the Bible, it's the word of God. I mean, but there are so many nuggets to take from Paul's trip. Um, first of all, he has found so much favor with the commander. I mean, let's think about this. In, in um, today's world that we're living in, he has found so much favor with the commander. He's, he's still in prison. He's still in prison. And yet when they go to the ports, the police let him visit friends so that they can meet his needs. He has so much favor. He has so, shown so much um, integrity and trust and good character that they're like, he'll, he can go visit his friends and they can meet his needs and, and he'll be back. I mean, they don't, they don't doubt this. Um, the commander doesn't doubt that. But um, <clears throat> so now they're on the ship. They've, they uh, left Crete. Um, I believe it was when Paul came and told them, I don't, I don't think we need to leave yet. It's going to get stormy. Um, it's going to be bad. Um, and so they're on the ship. It is bad. It's exactly like he said. And um, I chuckled when I read this because Paul says, um, men, you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Crete. You would have avoided all this damage and loss. So he's basically saying, I told you, I told you so, um, which I think is kind of funny, but he says, but take courage. No one, not, none of you will lose your lives, even though the ship will go down. And then he tells them about the angel coming to visit. Um, <clears throat> So take courage, for I believe God, it will be just as he said, but, and I circled, but we will be shipwrecked on an island. So he tells them, you're going to make it, you're going to live, but it's not going to be oh so comfortable when we go through it. The ship is still going to crash. It's still going to be wrecked. Um, So then they sense the land is near and um, they're just wanting to, I mean, all this storm is flying around them. Paul's just as peaceful as he can be um, because he believes what God told him. It doesn't matter that all the waves are crashing. The boat looks like it's going to crash. There's people are probably panicking. Um, it's scary to be out in the middle of the ocean on this boat and it's scary and Paul's just like it'll be okay so they're trying they're thinking they're going to find water they've dropped the anchors um they find out it's 120 feet deep and it's 90 feet deep they're going to run ashore too too soon um <clears throat> so they threw out four anchors and the back of the ship and they prayed for daylight and it says, then the sailors tried to abandon the ship. They lowered their lifeboat as they were going to put, <clears throat> to put out anchors from the front of the ship. But Paul said to the commanding officer and the soldiers, you will all die unless the sa sailors stay aboard. So the soldiers cut the rope, ropes to the lifeboat and let it drift away. So how many times in your life, my life, have we tried to abandon the promise of God, the safety of God, because it didn't look like what we thought it was going to look like? Um, I mean, because being on a boat in the middle of the ocean um, when storms are brewing everywhere doesn't feel safe, doesn't feel like it's going to be safe, probably doesn't look like it's going to be safe. Um, so I'm going to jump ship. But Paul says to them, you know, thank God we live in a community. We have this community around us with the Bible study people and everything that says, no, you're right where you're supposed to be. You're right where you're supposed to be. Um, you don't want to 
You don't want to give up the promises of God. You know, it's the same thing, you know, the Israelites over here. Um, you're going to die unless you stay on the boat. Um, so they stay. They decide to believe Paul and they stay. And then he encourages them to eat. Um, but they don't want to eat because they're freaking out. And they're so worried. Um, but he um, takes the bread. He breaks it. He blesses it and then he eats first um he eats first so he modeled his faith he modeled his faith for them um so then they were encouraged after they saw that good morning judy um and it reminded me of when I was on the run, my, my dear friend, Kayla, who God has placed in my life for this very journey. When I was doing the run on the 4th of July, it was so hot. Y'all, it was so hot. Um, and as I have gone through this journey for several years, not just the running thing, um, God has dealt with me about perfection and continues to do it. So we're running along. It is hot. I feel like I'm going to die. And uh, because it's so hot and y'all have heard me talk about um, my grandson and how he complains and everything. I swear to you, I turned into my grandson complaining on that run about it's hot. I have to go to the restroom. I can't do this. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but I was so hot and Kayla said to me, just pour a little water on your head and you, you'll feel so much better. And y'all, I used to be such a stickler about my hair always had to be perfect. Um, I could never get it wet um, in the pool, would never get my hair wet in the pool, uh, would just almost panic if I was, if it was getting wet in the rain. Um, so I could never get my hair wet. So she says to me, get your hair wet, just pour some, some water, but a little bit of water on your head. It'll be fine. And I said, I'm not pouring water on my head. I'm not doing it because immediately I thought, oh, I'll look terrible. Well, gosh, guys, I was sweating to death. I was looking like I was about to die. Y'all saw me. Um, but Kayla, who runs marathons, who is an avid runner, um, didn't even look like she's breaking a sweat. She leans her head back and she pours water on her head. And I thought, I don't know why that meant so much, why she did that. She did that to encourage me um, so that it would be okay for me to do it. And so Paul did the same thing when he ate the bread, encouraging the people to do it. So I ended up pouring some water on my head and it was heaven. Y'all, it was like heaven. It was like God came down and cooled me off himself. It was amazing. But um my pride and my worry was not gonna let me do it until Kayla modeled it for me. So Paul modeled her his faith and that they needed to eat. And so he ate first broke the bread blessed everything and then they began to eat because they were encouraged and they saw the model before them i mean we regardless of what we think are always a model of christianity because people are always watching always watching um they're always watching and we may not know who's watching. Um, we may not know who, just because we do one thing, um, we may not know who that's gonna encourage to take that step that they need to take. Um, so then it goes on, they were on the beach, everybody. So everyone escapes safely to shore, just as God had promised. Everyone escapes safely to shore. I mean, Paul's life is such a such an example of a 
human, not part God and part man, just part man, loving Jesus, walking it out every day. What an example that is. He had thorns in his side. He's, um, you know, he is not exempt from, from, you know, saying, I told you so to a bunch of people that he said, don't do that. It's not going to be good for you. Um, I mean, how many times do we tell people that and we want to go, I told you so. Um, he's not exempt from all the things that we have. Jesus wasn't even exempt from all the things that we feel, all the disappointments that we see or all of the um, self-doubt and um, just not having enough grace for ourselves to serve the God that we do. Instead, I mean, Paul just content in everything. He's content in everything because he knows his God. He knows his God. He knows his purpose. So the key is to know our God, to know this is what he's called me to do. I mean, Paul knew that he knew that he knew without a shadow of a doubt, he was called to minister. He was called to spread the good news. He was called, he had that Damascus road, go tell people about Jesus. Never look back. And so do we know what our purpose is? I think if we know what our purpose is and what the path that God has set us on, it makes it easier to walk through that with and be content in all things, even when they don't look great. Um, but let's see, then we go to Psalms. Um, oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. You know, I read it. It's so funny. I always think that um, I don't know scripture, that I can never remember scripture. Um I never remember the address for the scripture, I'll tell you that, but I know what the word says. Um, and it, when we're reading it in the New Living Translation, I always, I'll read it and I remember it in the, I think it's the King James Version. Our Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name, fills all the earth. Um, so, you know, we can remember, I was going to look, I wanted to see what the passion translation, how the passion translation wrote it. It says, Yahweh, our servant God, your glory streams from the heavens above, filling the earth with the majesty of your name. People everywhere see your splendor. You have built a stronghold by the songs of children. Strength rises up with the chorus of infants. This kind of praise has power to shut Satan's mouth. Childlike worship will silence the madness of those who oppose you. Look at the splendor of your skies, your creative genius glowing in the heavens. When I gaze on your moon and your stars mounted like jewels in their settings, I know you are the fascinating artist who fashioned it all. But I've asked this question, why would you bother with puny mortal man or care about human beings? Yet what honor you have given to men created only a little lower than Eliohim, crowned with glory and magnificence. You have delegated to them rulership over all you have made with everything under their authority, placing earth itself under the feet of your image bearers all the created order and every living thing on the earth sky and sea the wildest beasts and all that move in the paths of the sea everything is in submission to adam's son yahweh our sovereign god your glory streams from heavens above filling the earth with the majesty of your name people everywhere see your splendor so a reminder, a reminder of the authority that God has given us to rule over 
everything that he created, but not to rule over one another. But we can, t- we have authority to bind the enemy. We have authority to speak life into every situation. Um, and then we have Proverbs. The poor plead for mercy, the rich answer with insults. There are friends which destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. And I have to say that that scripture, that verse, uh, means more to me today than it has in several years. I mean, my friend Leslie has, we have been friends. She has shown me what godly friendship is. I mean, I could, I could go on and on about lessons she has taught me. Um, she is always there. She has been a friend that sticks closer than a brother. But um, I was so touched by um, Debbie and Leslie coming out and doing Bible study um, last Monday. And to know that those are the people that I do life with. Those are my friends that stick closer than a brother. I mean, those are the people that we're on Bible study with every day. So I want to tell you, if you haven't reached out to um, the people who are part of Elizabeth's dream big ministry or um messaged somebody on the bible study um through the facebook messenger anything um please do so if you need prayer or um you just need somebody to talk to because they're always there I mean, what an amazing community we are a part of that is so supportive and encouraging. Um, I mean, my heart is so full to know um, how amazing um, that every one of you were that encouraged me along the way and supported me and congratulated me. Um, it's just amazing. And I hope that you all feel the same way. Um, I hope that you all get to experience that um, support and love in your lives and know that the people who are on this Bible study, the people who are part of Elizabeth Inman Ministries are those types of people. And um please reach out. I want to encourage you that if you're going through a bad day or you're needing prayer, you just need somebody to talk to, you need to talk it out, you need to do something, reach out to one of the women that are in Elizabeth Inman Ministries because they'll be there for you. Um, And they will direct you to the cross and they will um, encourage you in Christ with the word of God. Um, So that being said, I want to uh, send everybody off as always with a little prayer of of encouragement for everyone. Um, So God, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for this beautiful people who join and sign on to watch the daily Bible studies. God, I thank you. I thank you for your awesomeness in our lives. I thank you that you are so amazing, that you are so faithful to us. You are so faithful to us, even when we can't be faithful. God, I thank you who pursue us always, 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 always you pursue us. So God, I thank you that, that you would give everyone who would listen Um, eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to know the love of God in every area of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So be blessed. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your family if you're with family. 
and I think Debbie will be on tomorrow. Um, so I love you all. Thank you so much for joining. And once again, I want to thank you for being so supportive and encouraging and going on this journey with me. Um, but have a wonderful day and I love you all.